Well, the National Cattlemen's Beef Association certainly welcomed the news that the USDA will soon distribute funding to the cattle producers who desperately need help during this ongoing national emergency. Now joining us from Denver is NCBA CEO Colin Woodall. And Colin, first of all, thank you so much for joining us here on Cattlemen to Cattlemen again. It's always good to be with you, Russell. Thanks for having me on. Well, let's get right into it because I want to know your thoughts on the USDA's $19 billion COVID-19 relief package for America's agricultural industry. Is it enough for the U.S. beef cattle industry and all those cattlemen and women out there? It is far from being enough. And that's based upon the economic study that NCBA commissioned to look at the losses of COVID-19. And as a result of that study, we realized that the U.S. beef industry had losses of $13.6 billion. And that was just through the first part of April. We know that those losses are continuing and could very well continue throughout the year. So we are currently working with USDA and more importantly, working with Congress as they prepare to turn return to Washington, D.C. to see what additional funding will be available. Because we also need to make sure that we are looking at all of the segments of cattle production. So that means cow-calf producers, stockers, backgrounders, and feeders. We need to make sure everybody understands very clearly this is not for the packers, this is for producers, but we need to ensure that it is equitably distributed among all of the producer segments. Colin, a follow-up to that question is Congress also recently passed a new round of funding to replenish the Small Business Administration's Paycheck Protection Program, along with including agriculture under the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. How important is this for our nation's cattlemen and women? Well, we were very happy to be included as part of the Small Business Administration's programs. Initially, we were a part of the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program, and we had a lot of our members that took full advantage of that program. But we weren't part of the EIDL, as you had mentioned. We have been successful in changing that, so agriculture will now qualify. And there is more money in both of those programs. So this is an additional opportunity for cattle producers to go out and try to find some more assistance if that's what they would like to, uh, to do. And we encourage everybody to get their paperwork submitted into the Small Business Administration just as quickly as they can, because this is a first come, first serve program. So they need to be in line if they truly want to have a chance of getting some of those payments. Of course, one of the big headlines here of late during this ongoing COVID-19 crisis, if that's what we want to call it, has been all the closures to those meatpacking plants nationwide. What's the very latest there, Colin, on trying to get back to some sort of normalcy? Well, unfortunately, I think that the, the worst is yet to come in that regard. And that is what I have gathered in talking to uh, the packers over the past uh, several days. Uh, they are still struggling with sick workers. They are struggling with the line speeds and in some cases plants that are uh, closed or could potentially close. So we are working with the Packers. We are working with their trade association in Washington, D.C. and also working directly with the White House and the National Economic Council to try to provide as much support as we can to ensure that they can continue to operate, even if it, adds, it is at a reduced speed. Uh, the last thing that we want is for them to shut down because we are already seeing the backup of live cattle. And that, of course, has a significant impact, uh, downward impact on prices. And given all of the stresses that we've had out there, uh, we need to keep the flow of cattle and beef moving. We're also trying to make sure that the uh, consumer understands that right now we don't have a shortage of beef, uh, but we need to uh, get the, the live cattle moving through these plants and harvest it again in order to be able to uh, continue that guarantee, especially as we get closer to the summer. Colin, some producers are also concerned these days about access to labor. What is the NCBA doing in this area about immigration and, of course, that very important H-2A program? 
We have spent a lot of time with Congress, the Department of Labor, and the White House to make sure that there is flexibility in the H-2A programs. That way workers aren't inadvertently sent home just because they don't have the opportunity to, uh, uh, to change up their status or address their status. And we've been able to get that. And most recently, just at the uh, end of last week, the president put out a proclamation saying that he was shutting down the borders to folks coming uh, across uh, looking for uh, uh, some sort of immigration status, except for agricultural workers. So that was a good exemption that was put in place that will try to help us continue to ensure that we have workers not only for farms and ranches and feedlots, but especially for the packing plants, knowing the need that we currently have and will probably continue to have here for several more weeks, uh, given the COVID-19 crisis. Well, weather and markets are still the two most important things to farmers and ranchers, whether it's near or far. And certainly the cattle markets aren't where we'd like to see them right now for producers. Can you give us an update on this a particular issue and some of the work that NCBA and its cattle market working group are doing as we speak? Of course, as we talk, uh, the uh, the biggest issue is, of course, this backup of, uh, of live cattle because of the packers not being able to run at full speed. But to your point, Russell, there is a bigger issue out there looking back not only at what we have seen over the six weeks of this COVID-19 crisis, but going back to the Holcomb fire last summer and beyond, where we, uh, where we have this issue of, you know, ensuring that producers are truly getting paid for the value of their cattle. Because of that, NCBA, during our annual convention in San Antonio, put together the Cattle Marketing Working Group. That working group has already met in person here in Denver in early March, and they have had the phone calls throughout this process. Uh, their engagement actually led to NCBA's letter to President Trump asking for investigation of the market situation uh, to include both USDA and the Department of Justice. And right now we are looking at the issue of, of price discovery and more importantly, uh, what percentage of cash trade needs to happen in the different regions of this country in order to ensure that we have true price discovery. Uh, these are projects that are ongoing and we we do expect to have some recommendations that we can share with our members during our summer business meeting in July here in Denver. Well, without question, some very encouraging words for cattlemen and cattlewomen across this great country of ours. And Colin, as we begin to wrap things up, uh, what encouragement would you give cattle producers who are going through some very challenging times here of late? Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to find a lot of encouragement these days, Russell, as you said, but I want all of NCBA's members to understand that, uh, that we are here. Uh, we are here every day of the week right now, making sure that we're uh, engaging in this process, trying to respond, whether that is looking long term at the markets, whether that is looking short term at keeping the packing plants up and running, or even addressing the issues of local health care, rural health care, and mental health issues. Uh, we are on the job. We are working to uh, ensure that producers have the tools to, to get through this the best they can. And more importantly, we are absolutely all in this together. Well, we certainly appreciate you taking time out of your very busy schedule to once again join us here on Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Thank you, Russell. Thank you again, NCBA's Chief Executive Officer, Colin Woodall. If you'd like to stay up to date on all the key issues and policies affecting the beef cattle industry, one way is by becoming a member of the NCBA. When you join, you'll get the Beltway Beef Newsletter, a weekly update straight from Washington that provides valuable insights on the key policy initiatives that may impact your business. To become an NCBA member, just call 866-233-3872 or visit the website ncba.org.